So the Glion started its life on Kickstarter. I uh, actually saw this at Innerbike 2014 in September, and then their Kickstarter was successfully funded. It got over 200% of their goal uh, on October 19th. At that time, it was actually called just the Ion Scooter, but I guess there was sort of some copyright uh, infringement happening there. There was another company that was using that. So they, they kind of switched it. It's an interesting product in, in the sense that it is so portable, it's relatively lightweight, and it's something that's convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this thing and show you what's in the box. Got some information in here, just basic stats on folded. 92 by 20 by 30 centimeters. So it gets pretty small and there's a lot of really neat features that I'm excited to explore on this. I'm gonna go ahead and dig a little bit deeper and maybe weigh this thing, but it's pretty well packed. You know, this must be the charger. Looking pretty good. Just got it out of the box. One of the first things I noticed was the wheel diameter is a little bit larger than some of the other kick scooters I've seen, but they're still these really hard, I don't think they're inflated. So you really don't have to worry about flats or anything, but uh, you're gonna have a higher attack angle, should be a little bit smoother. And then of course the charger here, there's no fans or anything. It's relatively lightweight, kind of like a standard computer charger. It says 1.2 pounds, so really lightweight. You could bring this along with you. It looks like uh, they recommend sort of a three, three and a half hour charge to get the battery completely full. It's a 36 volt, 6.6 .6 amp hour lithium ion pack that's built right into the, the standing platform on this. It's not removable. And I did uh, ask if I could kind of take it out and show what the inside looks like. And they said it's actually designed to be sort of waterproofed and, and that they really don't recommend taking out. One of the things that, uh, that I noticed here is that this cable is disconnected when they ship it. And they designed this for the for use when you're flying or traveling because uh, by completely disconnecting the battery pack uh, it just it limits the possibility that this thing accidentally turns on and you know deep discharges the battery or um, causes some some sort of a problem if it's in the cargo bin of like a, an airplane uh, and this is permissible according to the federal aviation like FAA uh, they say anything between 100 and 300 uh, watt hours of lithium lithium ion battery is permissible and this is like 237.6 watt hours so it should be good i mean you could put this in like a plastic storage container like a golf club uh, container put it on check it on like a, a flight and then you know get around more easily at your location so it's that's really cool but one of the big questions of course is not just how much the charger weighs so you can carry that along and fill up but how much does the scooter itself weigh so i'm gonna grab my scale here again and go at it lifting it up 25 25 pounds that's really not bad at all definitely definitely lighter weight and i think that's due in part to the smaller battery size i think they say this is is suggested that this could get like 15 mile range um and the top speed on this is a little bit slower. It's 15 miles per hour uh, compared to something like the Eco Rico that I think has sort of like a 20 mile per hour top speed. And of course, the faster you go, um, you get more wind resistance and, and you kind of discharge the battery more quickly. But that one has a larger battery, it weighs more. So those are the, it costs more. <laughs> those are some of the trade-offs. I'm gonna go ahead and unfold it a little bit and do a, do a test ride on this thing. Okay, so one of the other things that they say uh, as far as shipping is that once this arrives, it should be at about half full. Being a demo unit, I'm not really sure what level this one's at, but I'm gonna go ahead and just um, <laughs> dig into it anyway. I think in order to, to fold this handlebar up, you sort of push forward on this silver mechanism right here, and then you can slide up. They actually recommend putting your foot down on the deck like that, pushing up here. Yeah, lifting, it's really not too difficult. There we go, okay. So I just had to sort of push it forward a little bit harder and then it clicked. And then when you wanna take it down, you push forward again, slide that silver thing forward. So now we're looking more like a scooter. I'm gonna go ahead and try out that little kickstand. It's kind of fun. A little different angle on this thing here. Um, this is actually really cool. It's got like a little USB charger built right in. It's a thousand milliamp output is what they say. So I've actually got my iPhone here. Um, I'm gonna try it out and see whether it works or not and if it's enough to power my iPhone 6 Plus. 
So let's see here. Got the phone. Got my charger. Plug it in. doing anything nothing so far oh yeah it is okay there we go there's got the little lightning symbol right there so it is charging I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it and see if that lightning symbol goes away yep okay wow cool so you got onboard power right there you can charge your phone up a little bit if you need to we've plugged the battery in so that it's operational and now the next step is to, I think, fold out the handlebars. So you just kind of swivel them like that. Cool, and they just flip into place. Nice. So this is, you know, it's a narrow bar and it's just flat, but the bar, the, the stem rather, goes up and down so you can kind of adjust this for your height. And it's got a couple of click-in places here as well as this sort of quick release lever at the top. So I'm gonna slide it up. Okay, there's the lowest one. I'm gonna go a little higher because I'm medium height. I guess that's kind of it. And put that there. Really clean cockpit. Uh, there's no display, so you're not really gonna know how fast you're going. You've got a, a little bit of a, an idea of how much battery you have left based on this LED indicator. So I guess you push in the, there we go, I got it. Push in that little on off green switch Right now it says full. They say when it gets to this yellow light, that's about 50%, and then on red, it means kind of get home. Again, 15 mile range. It's not super duper far. I mean, you could always kick this thing uh, like a regular scooter, but I think that this has sort of a direct drive gearless hub in the rear, and so you might have a little bit of drag. You know, it might slow you down a little bit. Yeah, so it's a 250 watt motor. I've laid it down on its side so I can demonstrate uh, the rolling resistance. You know, here we've got the front wheel. When I spin it, it's nice and smooth. Not a lot of friction going on or anything. And then the rear wheel, you know, see it doesn't spin as freely. And again, I think that's because it's got a direct drive motor and uh, there's a little bit of cogging going on, which means that there are magnets uh, around the, the outside of this that are repelling against a stator that electrifies, and that's what creates your go motion. It's also what creates your stopping power on this uh, scooter. But when it's turned off, those magnets are still there. They're still repelling against the metal. And see, it just doesn't spin as freely. So keep that in mind. You know, if you got stranded way, way out, sure, you can kick this like a regular kick scooter, but it's not gonna roll quite as efficiently, basically. Okay, let's pull it back up. Got these nice fenders here gonna help to keep you dry. It's got pretty good ground clearance too. You know, it's looking pretty good. Got this little cap screwed on. And right next to it, that's the battery charging port right here. Just got a standard little plug-in slot. Kind of looks like an audio video port. There we go, nice and secure. We're already on. So this is the throttle. It's just a regular twist throttle. And this is the brake. You'll notice there aren't any like lever actuated brakes. And the only braking mechanism is the motor. So it actually uses electricity and that sort of repelling force that I was talking about to stop the scooter. It does not offer regenerative braking. The original prototype that I saw at Interbike did. It had regen, which was kind of cool. But I guess what they said is when this scooter was fully charged, it couldn't regenerate because you know it would, it would overfill the battery. And so you, you actually really couldn't stop um, with that model. And so they scrapped regen and they basically, now I think it requires electricity to stop. Uh, like right now, when the scooter's not on, you know, the lights aren't lit up, I haven't pressed the button, there is no brake. So, you know, I'm scooting around, twisting that, and I'm just gonna keep, keep going. <laughs> there's no other way, there's no heel brake or anything and if I was going down a hill like I am right now I mean you know it starts to pick up speed thankfully it's not a big hill you know that's one of the concerns is that if this is off there's really no way to brake and if the battery runs out completely there's no way to brake then either um, the good news is they've tried to account for this the battery uh, automatically stops it like stops giving power to the motor when it gets fairly low and they conserve a set amount of, of capacity 
just for braking. So they're trying hard to plan for that, but you know, it's just kind of a safety consideration um, that's worth keeping in mind. Also, the deck is a little bit shorter. So, you know, I have size nine and a half shoes and you know, I can't get two shoes onto this thing. I end up putting my, my rear foot kind of on top of that, that rear fender. And you know, maybe that's part of what keeps this compact and easy to stow when you're flying and lightweight in that kind of 25 pound range. But let's go ahead and power it up. Now, one of the things I noticed is that, you know, it takes me a couple presses. There we go, it finally stayed on. This is just a cheap, you know, piece of plastic here. I've, I've seen these on older electric bikes and I've noticed that um, when you're using the twist throttles, they are kind of like spring loaded. And if you let go like that, that click, that's hard on it. That's I wouldn't recommend doing that. I've actually had some of these fail on me over time because I was letting go of them. I would recommend kind of like smoothly releasing it if you want this to last. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, power this up and there isn't like a huge hill around here but there's a little bit of a steeper driveway over there. I'm gonna see if we can make it up that thing. Okay. Oh, and the other thing that's worth mentioning is um, sometimes this will start from, from rest just using the throttle but other times I kind of have to kick to get going and some of the other scooters I've reviewed, you definitely have to kick to get going. So I'm, I'm not really sure, but I think that's kind of a safety thing. So you give it a little bit of movement and then power it up. There we go. And there's the little hill right there. So nothing too drastic. I'm gonna try to slow down mid hill and see how we do. hear it struggle for sure but we did make it you know definitely moving it's a little bit precarious because these bars are so so narrow there's a little bit of play you know in that stem but not too bad getting comfortable on it the wheels definitely feel nice being a little bit larger like that you can definitely hear the motor kind of like where a little bit of a whine happening there but Otherwise, yeah, really smooth, and, and the throttle has just a nice, even power distribution. The bumps feel pretty good, even though this thing doesn't have any suspension, you know, compared to the Eco Rico, which has front and rear. I think the larger wheel size really helps, kind of smooths things out. I'm gonna hit another little bumpy section here. <laughs> oh boy. A little squirrely. Yeah. That is the Glion electric scooter model 100 for the full written review on this and other electric scooters. I'll see you back at electricridereview.com.